Boy, we got a lot to talk about, guys. We got Alliance bosses finally coming to Marvel Strike Force. We have Nightcrawler, the Break Glass in case of emergency, and Mephisto as a new Dark Dimension character. All that and more right now in the 2024 preview blog. Let's go talk about it. All right, so we got the 2024, I guess the 2023 preview part two, uh, hitting us at the end of November. Uh, this is exciting, guys. This is what some of the stuff we saw when we were in LA. I think this is really cool. I think you guys are going to like this. I liked it when I saw it. I'm excited. Let's talk about it. So, Siege of Battle Worlds. We're getting a sneak peek at the awesome content and the features coming in the rest of 2023 and into 2024. Uh, so, we're going to be turning the corner. We've had a hard look at both gameplay data and feedback from our players in this year's identified some priority areas of improvement, including greatly reducing hoarding events. They did a great job doing that. Improving a new player ability to prepare for limited side events. I would argue there's still some room to be uh, room for improvement there, especially when we're talking about new legendary characters. Setting event difficulty appropriately for many players to feel successful. Well, on the heels of the Green Goblin event, I think that's a horrible sentence. You know, difficulty 9 needs to start existing, but I digress. I'm too excited to get too mad about things. Ensuring characters maintain their valuable for a reasonable period of time. That remains to be seen, but so far so good. General game stability and reducing bugs. Boy, do they need to get a lot of work in on that one. So many improvements have already been made this year to provide a more satisfying experience. I'd agree with that. Uh, reinforcing priorities and ensuring game stability and reducing the number of bugs with new releases. There's been less character bugs. There's been more game stability issues with releases. I don't want to say too much on this because we got fun modes we got to talk about. With some of the recent issues experienced, we made a deliberate decision to move people away from other projects to focus specifically on game stability. This level of priority will continue and should manifest in clearer builds in the future. Cool. We celebrate the game's fifth year anniversary. Uh, we're making big moves to ensure success for the next five years. I love that. I love hearing that they want the game to grow uh, higher than it already has. For example, we made recent changes, a huge change to how we deliver game updates to eliminate associated server downtime. It might seem like a minor change on the outside, but it turned to lead a significant shift in our process. It isn't a trivial amount of work. We're mentioning this because the mood here isn't business as usual. We're not bypassing hard work. We know needs... Uh, we know it needs to be done, and just because it's hard, we still have much more to do. We'll take the time. All right, cool. This is where you commend player feedback has more weight now in shaping the game's future than ever before. I would agree with that. We started a new players council where representatives give feedback directly to our team on a recurring basis. Uh, we hosted an on-site event for a dozen content creators. Yes, I was there. Uh, where they gave feedback on many upcoming contents and features. We've already taken action to address it. The team gets daily feedback from players via many sources, and community engagement team, and customer support. Your voices matter and will influence many of the topics we're about to discuss here. On that note, yesterday I put out a video talking about an individual who got banned seemingly for no reason. Uh, we did get the community managers involved with that. I think myself and the players' uh, council, we did a bunch of work and we got that guy unbanned. It does seem like it was done in error. So uh, welcome back to homie Zach. All right. Fun stuff. Okay, so that was that was the stuff they're trying to do on the interior of the game. Stuff they're doing. They definitely took our feedback. They took my diamond feedback and threw it down the toilet. That's fine. But Siege of Battle World, this is something to be excited about. So we're thrilled to announce the next game mode for Marvel Strike Force is currently in the early stages of production. In recent years, we put significant effort into developing and improving PvP modes like Cosmic Crucible and Alliance War. The PvE game modes like Raids, Scourge, Trials have also seen improvements, but we're ready to go a step further. This is what I love. I love the PvE stuff way more than the PvP stuff. I'm surprised they didn't mention Tower there, but maybe they're doing improvements there as well. Slated for release in 2024 is the new PvE mode, Siege of Battleworld. Strike learned of a planet called Battleworld, an amalgamation of locations from various conquered universes. The planet is divided into territories, each ruled by a powerful boss, varying for control, vying for control, rather. To mitigate the threat of these bosses, your alliance is authorized to systematically siege various territories one by one. Sieges last six days, that's one week, uh, with each zone offering a new set of challenges and rewards. As your alliance completes zone missions, you'll advance through the territories one zone per day and have the opportunity to challenge the boss in the final zone. Characters in the battle world can only be used once daily, so your alliance needs to coordinate to maximize points. We'd like to show you some early designs. Please keep in mind that the details uh, below might change. So I actually have a bigger copy of those pictures. We're going to take a look at that. So this is going to be what the UI looks like. So this is Magneto. Um, 
yeah, so we gave feedback that Magneto's not a great character to be the first boss. It's just a character, right? We want uh, them to up that. And I think that they took that feedback. Maybe they're still running with it. I don't know. Uh, I hope so. We want somebody like Onslaught there, right? Like just a bigger Magneto. Now there's some sort of uh, programming issues with that. But I, I do believe that they're working hard to, to make this like a really cool, really fun experience. So I'm excited for that nonetheless. Uh, but yeah, so this is going to be what it looks like here. Um, we're going to be going in as your alliance. So it's, it's kind of like raids where your entire alliance is tackling this. This is going to be zone three, right? So the first two zones, we already have people. They've earned a couple of victory points. They're working their way towards that final boss. Magneto, you can see on the far right side. Uh, and once we beat all that, we get a bunch of um, rewards and we get to fight a big boss. The big boss hopefully has new mechanics, lots of cool stuff. I'm excited for all that. Now, if you've played Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes or the new Lord of the Rings mobile game, which sucked, it sucked because they were trying to do too much with their, what they call their raid system, without having a built-in roster with the availability for players to enjoy it. This is that, but we have built-in rosters and we're able to enjoy it, right? We're an established game. So there's going to be cool, uh, cool obstacles that we're going to have to tackle as an alliance, as a group of friends. We reach the final boss, we fight the final boss. Who knows who they're going to be using as final bosses. We kind of really push back on the whole Magneto thing. Uh, and hopefully we're going to see characters like Onslaught. Maybe a giant Apocalypse. A giant Dormammu. Uh, you know Mephisto. We're going to talk about Mephisto later. Maybe he can make an appearance there. A huge Ultron. Maybe the Infinity Gauntlet Ultron. There's so many big bads in Marvel Strike Force that don't get the respect they deserve. And this is where we can now put them, right? We just need to find a way to make them big. Make them sexy. Make them fun. And I think we're going to have a big winning topic there. So that's the battle world. Not too, too much to discuss. So there's going to be a daily and siege completion rewards. Battle world features a seasonal leaderboard as well where alliances will compete for the highest tier of rewards. I think we saw uh, that in the first slide here. You can see season ends in four days and five hours. You know, these are the, the current alliances that are up there. Uh, they're, not, they're not real alliances, right? I'm sure there's just probably one developer in each thing. So that's that's the uh, that's all we know right now about the alliance boss battles and that, that whole game mode that leads to the boss battles. I'm very excited about that. I think that is such a cool idea, and I can't wait to you know theorycraft our way through that. Then we have the Extreme X Men. Some of the most requested characters are coming soon uh, in the Extreme X Men team. We're incredibly excited to announce the fan favorite Nightcrawler is finally teleporting in, and you can unlock him from your roster before the end of 2023. Merry Christmas, everybody! Nightcrawler is coming to a wallet near you. Doesn't matter. Love Nightcrawler. Excited for that. They did just put out a, uh, a message on Twitter. Uh, Bamf, which is the sound that Nightcrawler makes when he teleports in and out of the comics. So here's some concept art that looks pretty close to what the final character model is going to look like. Uh, I, you know what? Uh, I don't think this is the right art style for Marvel Strike Force, but I think the costume he's wearing, his hair flare, the tail, I think it looks cool. When they make that more cartoony like Marvel Strike Force, I think you know it's going to work out really nicely. All right, so let's get back to the blog. Uh, so yeah, yeah, keep your eye out on the weekly developed blogs on Friday uh, for more announcements on the new Extreme. They forgot a T there. X Men team and reworks to some of your favorite mutants reworks. So hopefully, and we asked them for this, like, hey, people love, 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 love the Sinister Six rework. Make it like that. Let's get Cyclops some love. Let's get Jubilee some love. Phoenix some love. Let's get all those characters. Find different game modes for them. Hell, give them a battle world tag. Who cares? Put that ahead of the curb. Uh, just give that X-Men tag, you know, the characters that we love, give them some use, and then do Spider-Man after that. All right, so you choose new characters is something else they've been working on. The first player choice poll was a huge success, with the winner being Silver Surfer, who shall receive the symbiote treatment in the near future. The feedback on the first character vote was overwhelmingly positive, so we'll do more polls uh, with even greater levels of community involvement in creating new characters and teams. This is one of the primary avenues for you to shape the game's future. I think this is really cool. We were told that no matter who we chose, it was going to be a bio character. No matter if it was Thanos or Silver Surfer, even though their original characters are mystic, it was going to be a bio character. I'm kind of expecting this Silver Surfer symbiote to be maybe the leader of a symbiote team that we use in the raids. A lot of people are saying the Rebirth team's not cutting it there. So I think that could be pretty cool. And we do have the uh, the concept art for him as well. And I think he looks absolutely badass. It looks like he's like complete now. I'm super excited to have a Silver Surfer that doesn't suck. Um... I'm just a huge surfer fan. When he came to the game, I was pretty excited. 
All right, next uh, next topic. Escape from Clin. The feedback received from the players regarding the modes like Avengers Tower and Sword Satellite has been encouraging. Yeah, I love those modes. They're a lot of fun. They definitely need to find a way to make uh, the last stage impossible, though, so that, you know, people are dropping down and they're doing some sort of strategy to climb back up and there's a better efficiency fight as opposed to who made it to the top and just sat there for 10 days, right? Um, but I digress. Uh, citing satisfaction with the level of challenge of related words as you enjoy these tower words, we're working on the next iteration called Escape from Clin. So, this new tower mode has a unique twist where you only bring a squad of three characters per team, but you can place them in any of the five available slots. We're very interested to see the uh, inventive team compositions the community comes up with. While all players at commander level 65 plus can participate, the higher levels of the mode will be more rewarding for players with extensive and powerful rosters. This is an early design, but again, with the modified uh, before release. So this, I think, is really cool. We can see, you know, this is going to be, you know, cell two, which I guess is going to be like floor two, right? We got to take on these weak heroes for hire with the Lady Deathstrike. We only get to bring in three characters. We're going to have some really cool three-piece teams, maybe like, you know, Tangled Web. But we sub out Noir, we put in, I don't know, Morgan Le Fay. Or maybe it's Morgan Le Fay, Agatha Wong. Or maybe Heartless is better than Agatha. These are things we're going to have to figure out when we do this climb. I just hope there's a bajillion floors to do because looking at the power levels, thinking about the teams that we have as developed rosters, I hope it's not 40 and we get stuck uh, like we did last time. All right, so here are a few details to help you start preparing. Battle in this mode is free. It doesn't require resources or energy. Health and ability energy is persistent. Doesn't reset between floors. Characters can't heal between floors. Restarting a run will drop you down to floor one. Oh, wait, am I reading this completely wrong? This is not like tower at all. So there's no energy. We get to just go all the way until we can't go anymore. Characters can't heal between floors. We're starting to run. We'll drop you down to floor one. Floors will have a specific trait requirements. There are no save points between floors. Part of the challenge is not to get the best run in one run. Milestone rewards are paid out relative to the highest number of floors cleared in your best run. Oh. So we can keep going. There's got to be like a bazillion floors then. So we get to keep going until we start a new run. And we're going to get to be using three pieces to keep climbing. Do the enemies... Characters can't heal between floors, but do the enemies maintain their damage? Say, if we, like, lose? Oh, this is really interesting. I have no idea what's going on here. This is something I have no idea about. But this looks super fun. I'm very excited for this. This is great. Uh, then we got Dark Dimension 7. So the story of Dark Dimension continues with the next page turning. Earlier this year, we planted seeds of the story involving the cunning demon Mephisto. Yeah, every single legendary had him in it, right? So Groot-like strength in 2024 with a new challenge and great rewards. This is still several months away and more deals to follow. Yeah, it feels like a lot of people just got Super Scroll, so I think it's a good thing if they're just going to chill on it for a little bit. But excited to already know that Mephisto is coming to the game. You know, we got gypped in the MCU. We didn't get to get Mephisto there, but getting Mephisto here is going to be nice. So I'm excited for Mephisto and what sort of crazy mechanics this guy is going to have to bring to unseat Super Scroll as the absolute most bonkers characters ever. All right. So these character traits are the ones we're going to need. Uh, they're currently being tested as requirements. It could change slightly before release. So missions 1, 2, 3 is no traits. 4 and 5 is city non-mythic. 6 and 7 is global non... Oh, non-mythic. Non-mythic legendary, non-mythic legendary. What is mythic? Car missions 8 and 9, cosmic. Non-mythic, non-legendary. Missions 10 and 11, legendary. Missions 12 and 13, mythic. Okay, so what is mythic? Uh, what's that last trait you mentioned? We hear you ask. The new mythic trait will soon be added to the following characters. Ultron, Doctor Doom, Dormammu, Super Skull, Ultimus, Apocalypse, Kestro. Okay. I would hate this, except there's five characters on this list that I use all the time, right? We just don't do Ultron, we don't do Ultimus. The fact that they threw Kestrel in there, I think, is really good. So Kestro, Apocalypse, Super Skull, Dormammu, Doctor Doom, they all have their uses. They all mechanically work amazing. Apocalypse, Super Skull, and Kestrel, they're still very relevant in the damage aspect as well. Dormammu and Doctor Doom have mechanical things that are going to kind of last forever. So if we got to bring them, it doesn't say any kind of gear tier or anything, but I assume it'll be gear tier 19 or ISO 3, whatever the case may be. It's not going to feel bad to put it on these five characters, right? So, yeah. I, I, I don't care about that. Uh, mythic trait, cool. Whatever. Uh, weird that they put Kestrel and they didn't put, like, Spider Weaver, Val, and Deathpool, but okay. Uh, Mythic will generally identify characters that are acquired through Dark Dimension or a special method different from Legendary and no normal character release. To fit that definition, sometime in the future, Kestrel will be added to the Dark Dimension rewards for increased accessibility. That's awesome! Oh, that's great! So they can put her on, what is it, Dark Dimension 3 that doesn't have a character? Throw her in there for people to get her maxed out right away? I love that. 
All right, quality of life improvements. We made a number of quality of life improvements this year and have several more coming in the near future. Most of the improvements listed below are part of a, a suit of UI user interfaces. So Epic Characters Hub, new UI elements for better visualization of requirements, uh, progress, and unlock. Nice! About damn time. That's amazing. Meta character roster highlights, new UI for visualization prioritization of characters and teams that are new and or see the most uh, play at a given time, including associated game modes. Nice. Uh, RIP content creator tier list, but that's fine with me. Store filters, sort offers by certain types to better service uh, the items and resources you're looking for. They kind of have that now. Monthly meta event highlights. Pronounced visual callouts of individual events that support the month-long meta event to ensure better progression. Cool. Uh, please keep sending us your questions. This is all great stuff, guys. And then we got the website improvements. The web team is heavily associated, uh, or sorry, allocated to ensuring that MarvelStrikeForce.com supports new in-game comp uh, content and features. When new hotness is released, the web team creates uh, companion tools to set players up for success. The team is also working on some highly requested quality of life web improvements. First up is redesigning the player profile menu to streamline, switching between player profile, roster, and save teams. This leads to the next big improvement with Alliance Management offering a number of new functions, including a new recruit tab. Uh, the, recruiting is the biggest nightmare in this game. Keeping your Alliance at full capacity is a nightmare at times. And I know that a TyJ and Toxie uh, that are spearheading the the web, if not doing it their, their entire selves, I'm not quite sure. I know that they play the game. They know what the game needs, and I trust that they're doing amazing work for us. Uh, we kind of got a glimpse of this before when we were in L.A. The idea is that it's going to be very easy to recruit off the website, uh, and it's going to seamlessly work in-game. So if you accept an invite from the website, you're going to then switch alliances in the game. Uh, it's going to help kind of filter out what people are doing, what war zone they want, what sort of raid they're capable of, all of that and more. Uh, I'm super excited for this. Uh, it's, yeah, so think about like, it's forums on the website in a very condensed, very meticulous way. It's going to be great. I'm super excited for just the game to grow that way, right? Like, if the game relies around alliances so much as it does, we think about Alliance War, you think about raids, think about the new battle world, think about just having friends, big community, right? The website is kind of the thing that's really pulling people together to kind of build that glue that holds people to the game. So excited to see that get expanded on. All right, wrapping it up. There's a lot more coming next year that we're really excited about and can't wait to share with you. We want to thank you for your passion, support, and progress to help guide the team in creating unique, fun, and rewarding experience every day. We'll continue to keep an open dialogue and provide weekly announcements to plan your progression. Thanks for being on this journey with us. Hey, thank you, Scopely, because even though I rage out every time Scroll demolishes me and I and I yell at whatever developer uh, you know, did his kit, you, you made a game that I do really enjoy. Uh, enough bootlicking. Let's wrap this video up. What do you guys think? I'm super excited for the battle world stuff. I think that is kind of the highlight, right? Uh, world bosses, hopefully not Magneto, coming in hot. That'll be a lot of fun. Working our way through as an alliance getting in there. We got uh, to know some more details. We got to get the nitty gritty. Like, how does this work? Do we all get to play it? Um, what is there like, you know, uh, traits that we have to use? All that kind of stuff is stuff we need to figure out. But world bosses. And then the new tower. That, that's really interesting. I'm excited. I have no idea what that's all about. I must have missed that meeting. Uh, but let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. And as always, stay happy, healthy, have fun. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now. That's it for the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Stay happy, healthy, have fun. And I'll see you in the next one.